You're gonna freaking shit on the nugget right now? Oh, Lloyd's really gonna hate you again, bro. Lloyd's gonna fucking jump on this and fucking beat your ass. God damn it. Welcome to the Open Mic Pain with Anthony and Wayne Podcast. Why, hello everybody, and... Welcome to an open mic pain with Anthony and Wayne, and we are really excited this week to bring on our one of our favorite North Shore comedians that is out there. His name, the dumb electrician Tommy Wires, and he's got a lot of cool shit that we want to talk about today. So first, Tommy, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on, man. This is such an honor, man. I'm humbled to be uh, invited to this, and thank you so much. You guys are great. I've been following you for a while, man. No, we really appreciate it, and also, it's good to have, like, a dumb person of a different occupation, and because usually we just have a dumb piece of shit named Wayne. Uh, how you doing, Wayne? <laughs> I'll tell you. Feeling good. <laughs> I missed that. It's been a couple weeks. I missed that. The three P. <laughs> That's it. That's what we need. So, one cool thing that we wanted to say off the rip, because uh, we're really excited to do it ourselves, and there's a brand new show, Free Comedy Experience, that's happening in Seabrook at the Grill 17. And we are super pumped about it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that show? Oh, man. I don't know if we have enough time in this episode. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's 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 really a baby that has been really worked hard at to make especially um, attractive for all genres to come and enjoy themselves, right? So first first things first about the place, it's, it's a family-owned restaurant. Um, they're really awesome people, uh, really hardworking. Um, yeah, actually, um, one of our members of our group called, um, my podcast group that runs it, his name's Sean Ruiz, Mr. Ru. He actually worked there as a bartender for a little while and, uh, he built up a rapport with these people and he did trivia and he kind of opened a lot of doors for this location. And it's, it's kind of like become, you know, a place that we just go to hang, um, you know, regardless of comedy or regardless of what's going on. They do trivia, they do music, they do a lot of stuff. And the people that work there are just so genuinely nice. They wanted something um, like this. So we kind of put it together. Uh, there's three of us. It's uh, me, Sean Ruiz, Mr. Ru, um, Jay Gillespie, uh, Mr. Jay. And, you know, we kind of tag team it so that it's not all of us or one of us having to do all the efforts at once, right? So we, we divide that and it makes it much easier for us. And we just want a, a place to be enjoyable for what our show is, right? And our show is, um, the style is a source of comedy that is for families, for people, for, it starts at eight, but you know, we would, we, we want to keep it so that it's, you know, family friendly, um, you know, we're going to try to really keep it so that the customer base can grow and um, we can turn it into something awesome. We So so we, we kind of posted it this week um, on Monday and the amount of outpouring of support, people that want to be on it was tremendous. I mean, you know, everybody in our community uh, has reached out to either one of us, one of the three of us, and has asked to be on it. And we just, we didn't have enough room. Um, we had to book it out almost three, three week, three and a half weeks at this point for the amount of people. And that's a different person for everyone. So, and, and um, we got, we got a really good list for Monday, um, which unfortunately I have to drop the bomb. <laughs> I'm not going to be at the first show because of my work schedule, um, which I'm a little saddened by, but I didn't want to hold up the process. Process. So that's about the gist of it. You know, it's 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 going to be fun, and we're excited about it. And listen here, you. Sorry, Wayne. Shut for a second. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've, it's been two weeks since I've insulted Wayne. I've been too nice to him. I got to get out there. Oh nice. no! But real quick, I, I have to say, it goes. I, it, I think this is the coolest thing in the world. Is that there's a couple concepts to this. Uh, that I think are going to create a avenue of great audiences consistently through the night. And one is that you are going to be, uh, when you go to this mic, you are going to be there the whole time. You're going to stay uh, from 8 to 10 because yep. the order is going to be actually tag-teamed by the comic who's on stage and spun on the wheel. 
Um, by the way, this is okay to talk about, right? I can cut anything. Yep, you that is. Uh, it's actually we actually we call it the real of fortune. Um, yeah, but such yeah, a continue. Cool yep. Thank yeah, you. So yeah, so one that's amazing because you are going to be able to keep your comic piece of shit ass at this show instead of leaving right after you set, <laughs> and that way people can laugh and have a yep. good time. Two, not going to be the same comics every week. You're gonna you have to take a couple weeks off before you can go to it again because I love all of your jokes, but I hear it. Every fucking day, it's nice to get something fresh in there to see in this awesome show. So I think those two things right. are going to take this. One, the area needed it so fucking bad. There's nothing around there for great uh, shows for comedy. But uh, two, you guys are setting it up few. already to be successful. Yeah. Agreed. I, I Thank you, man. That means a lot what you said. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just uh, – it's, it's we put a lot of forethought into not um, being – any favoritism for how our brand wants to be, you know, observed personally. And, you know, that was kind of the, I don't know, I would say it's kind of one of the things that drove me um, almost to a point not wanting to do comedy at one point because it was just like, man, I go to these places and it's like the same, same, same. And it's like, I'm glad people are performing and perfecting their sets, right? But, at some point, you have to like you have to let the guy that walked in the door that brought a piece of paper and is putting his entire life's worth of stress and will and and love for something that he's never done and is scared. You know, you know he's he's, he's I don't know if I can swear, but he you know he's oh, yeah. he's, he's, he's shitting his pants, right? The kid's shitting his pants, right? And we're all over here not talking to him, putting him on last. No one can see him. No one gives him feedback. It's just you know I don't know, man, like. We, we weren't okay with it. And, and it's something that has bothered us. Sean's been doing it three years. I'm doing it too. Jay's been doing it a long time. And, you know, it's just like we talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Finally, we just say, you know, we're pulling the trigger. We're going to make it so that we have one that is enjoyable. There's a lot to unpack with that, um, with everything you said. First off, piggybacking off of what you just said, uh, one of the reasons I was very excited to get you on was out of the whole – comic community you jay and sean are probably three of the most supportive out there i'm constantly seeing sean like go get him brother we need to support everybody and all that stuff jay's the same way you're the same way um I and you're right you sean, do go to these but he's yep. yeah Sorry. Um, no you're fine uh you are right though you go to these places and even when you see some of the same people over and over again you don't um nobody not a lot of people are talking too much i mean i'm kind of a, a wallflower uh, despite being a salesman and a uh, you know aspiring comic now, you wouldn't think I'd be nervous to talk to people, but I kind of am sometimes. Um, yeah. But I do it when I when I can. Um, yeah. But it's just taking that first step and stuff. But yeah, having a place where you can go and and get feedback or have people come up and say, "Hey, that was really good. Try this or try that." Or, "Hey, your hat's too low and your mic is too high." Yeah. Fuck you, Anthony. <laughs> Oh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but, Wayne's you know, got it's, this it's thing where he wants to be a ninja of comedy, where he wants to hold the mic so that it covers his mouth. It's Batman, <laughs> maybe Batman more. As I, hey, I'm well, Batman has a cowl, that... so it'd be like, yeah, right? cowl. yeah exactly. And he covers yeah. like this, and he's like, hey, everybody, let's talk about my dude. <laughs> I'm like, what, like Wilson the fucking, over there behind the fence. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. He Wilson himself, but um, that's why we love him. Yeah. That's it, man. No, I hear you, man. It's tough. It's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, it, it is. I mean, people have anxiety of talking to people, right? And it's mm -hmm. one of those things where it's just like you can't understand it unless you have it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel for those people, right? Because I, I don't I, – I, tr I try to engage no matter – what type of person I'm talking to, no matter who it is, I want to know about you and I want to hear about you and I want to friggin' talk about things that you were excited about and I want to show you support and I want to friggin' help you. I want to give you an idea on a joke if you're interested. I'm not going to walk over to people and say, hey, man, you know, you really should throw this in there. You should do this. I'm never going to do that. But if someone comes up to me and asks me, dude, so I, <laughs> sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. My, I started this. I, when I started this, I went to one mic. And I'm not going to talk what mic it was, but it's a mic where people, uh, you know, in the community, they kind of do feedback for, for a reason, right? And I support that one, and I go to it, and I, I really loved it. At, at When I started off, it was a great place to learn, right? I went on stage one night, and I did, my, I did a great performance, um, 
and, and, you know, I was proud of it because it was like one of my early on ones, right? <clears throat> and um, I got off and they're, wow, good job. You know, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, right? The show's like three hours long, right? And people come in and out how it goes. A lot of people hit a mic before and then go to it, right? Well, that's, you know, one of the things that's difficult. So this one individual showed up, got up on stage, did his set. Now, there was probably six or seven people before them that, you know, I gave, you know, my ideas to one of the first few. And then the rest of them were kind of like, you know, Tommy, what do you think, right? And, I, and so I gave my opinion. I said, I think you could spin it this way. I think you could put this in front of that instead of this over here. This kid came up, he went on, and, uh, you know, so I was in tune to, like, giving these people advice. Like, I just felt like it was, like, what they wanted to do. I, I was kind of new there. So the kid went on, and I was like, hey, you know, um, can, I, can I give you my, my opinion? And the kid's like, I'm all set. All set. And I go, oh, okay. So, unfortunately, I'm kind of a friggin', I, I, I kind of can hold a vengeance sometimes, and it's probably a <laughs> fault of mine. So I went That's gun into trait. this. <laughs> Dude, I went gunning for this kid. I got a Yoda fucking bottle just to have it on there just because he has a name that rhymes with something in fucking Star Wars. <laughs> just, I just I just harassed him for at least two, three weeks till he became my friend. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, we have like... so many comedy feuds. Like We had a booker in the beginning who we mentioned every once in a while. Who, To be honest with you, uh, he wasn't even booking us for anything. We just happened to talk to him, and he was a cunt to us. And uh, well, to this day, we're like, you know, I don't even think I'd ever do a show for that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, There's a reason. <laughs> but yeah, you know, the first impression can make a big deal, make or break something. You know, and that was our, right, our first, man. our very first interaction with him. He was kind of a dink to us, and we we're like, oh, oh like, dude, fuck that guy. Yeah, go fuck yourself and what you fucking wrote in on, dude. Seriously, you know what Jerry Seinfeld said, which made me have a lot of perspective on the uh, why I, I try to be nice to everybody. Uh, as like sometimes you hear someone and you're like, "You thought you could do this because it's so bad." But I and then it used to bother me in the beginning, but now yeah, I uh, listened to Jerry Seinfeld talk to I think it was Godfrey about Godfrey about a um, his philosophy on comedy, and he said. How long you've been in comedy is literally how old you are in comedy. Meaning if you've been in comedy for right. nine years, you're a nine-year-old yes. in comedy. You still don't it's know fucking so... shit. <laughs> it's so, so just true. Like right now, we're two years old, and we should not be having vengeance with each other. We're not showing shit. We should just be trying to figure out how to live. <laughs> you have a yeah. two-year-old. You know, they hold grudges like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. no, he shits his pants. That's what I do. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we transition to stage the same way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you're a Seinfeld fan, obviously, right? Do you watch comics and Kaz doing comedy? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, what an episode! What 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 a phenomenal series for just just learning comedy, right? Oh my, like yeah. I learned that actually gave me a lot of the balls to finally actually do it. I I was it was a few years ago, and uh, do you hear me? Yep. yep oh, okay. It, it was, oh, all that sound finally went away. Did Wayne mute up? Wayne sure did. <laughs> Wayne with the job lot fucking mic over there. What's going on, kid? <laughs> no, he just he records in Rapunzel's tower, so there's a bunch of air going on around him all the fucking time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. But no, it gave me a lot of confidence in, in writing abilities and listening to like how easy they made it sound when they were getting into it. And and yeah. I'm not saying it's not hard, you know what I mean? But like you watch it, and you're like, those were normal guys at one point. Right. They were like us. They were yeah. one year. They were one week. They were one day. They were the one day guy that I'm hoping comes to my mic one day and big becomes big. I want him to be at my mic one day. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's just like, <clears throat> there's not enough people that want that. You know? I, I, not enough that, that actually promote that, right? Yeah. I Well, I, I'm a big proponent of... Um like you guys just supporting everybody. Like if you go on my Facebook page, I'm constantly sharing flyers for people. I don't, I've never even met. Like I'll just, I'll friend request anybody that looks like a comedian. And if I see them posting flyers, I'm like, Hey, go check it out. If it's in your neck of the woods, go to, because it's better for everybody. Right. Yeah. You know, if, if, I call if, it... if, if these shows get, uh, get a lot of people there and, and take off and then there's going to be more shows for everybody to be on. And right. there's no shortage of comics, but there are shortages of shows. So. Yeah. I call it social venereal disease. Mm. <laughs> I feel that 
That's definitely it's what Wayne is spreading out there. Lots of herpes. <laughs> Wayne's fucking face on. <laughs> Wayne's headshot is fucking full of semen. <laughs> that's, <a fucking> <laughs> no, that's just my head. <laughs> like a glazed donut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I just got... So I've been saying on this podcast for 70 episodes or whatever the hell we're into it that I will never get social media. And then uh, one time uh, people were like reaching out like, oh, Wayne, how do I get a hold of Anthony? I was like, well, I need an Instagram now. So I made one, but I'm very, so far, only promoting the things that I do and animal facts. That's all I've done so far. So I don't know if I'm doing the altruistic mode that Wayne is. We all go to animal facts. somewhere, dude. Well, not animal can we, facts. Can we go down that rabbit hole for a second? Yeah, yeah, real quick. <laughs> what real, what real animal quick. facts? The great yeah, parents so, that your dad owns? I, no, no, don't I got a couple. Shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That is a good fact. We'll get into that, actually. We, we I'll have to splice no, that in. Shut up! I need to know if a, if a dolphin has pneumonia, does it cough out of its blowhole or its mouth? <laughs> it's a very fucking fair question. Right? I have that's no idea, because if you think well, about... Question, right. If... If you think about your, I mean, where you well, eat and where you breathe, they're two different, you know, your trachea and your larynx, right? So two different yeah. places here that you, that you have. Now them, and the blowhole is the trachea. So when yeah. you get pneumonia, it's from that valve. So they have to mm. cough out of their fucking head. There's no way that they don't. Yeah. I was thinking about this for a Isn't that why they blow? Like whales yeah. and stuff? Isn't that why they blow? No. Yeah, they get the water if you break the science. Yeah. yeah, if you break the science down, it comes out of their, bu- their back hole. Fuck. See, exactly. I this, this, I was talking about that. I couldn't figure this it out. Wild. Also, yeah. yeah, one more tangent. What is of, he have uh, snots, in, though? <laughs> those snots in there? Oh, well, it depends. If they have what pneumonia, is it's going to be. What snots with it? Like, you, you're just going to have snots draping off the back of your back hole. Yeah, that's hot. I, I feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's hot as hell. I'm into that. No. <laughs> I, uh, you know... I just thought it was interesting that that uh, I know everybody knows that chickens are dinosaurs and all that, but I thought it was interesting that we were shrews, which dinosaurs ate, and then they evolved into something that we ate. So I don't know. I thought it was just interesting. Like you got to be nice like to a your mole? squirrel. Yeah, it's like a What's squirrel. It's a shrew. It's a mole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's yeah, kind of like if it right. reciprocates. It's kind of like if we're cunts to squirrels, which we kind of are in the grand scheme of yeah. things. Um, like yeah. I murder so many squirrels in my yard. Just yeah. for burying nuts in it, which they could totally do. Yeah. I, they do it in an area, even an area I don't even like of my lawn, and I That's still it. brutally fucking kill them. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> in 300 million years, it just doesn't even care. <laughs> there could Screw be... those nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But what if there's dinosaur-sized squirrels in 300 million years, and we are again? I'm trying to bury my nuts in a squirrel's lawn. Oh, dude, you just, man, you blow it, like, poof, dude, like, yeah. I don't even know Drugs. where to go with that. I got um, chickens. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Those were velociraptors. They were. Years ago. And, yeah, and, they, that, and they're amazing. They're so amazing. <laughs> I had chickens, but then uh, my wife accidentally, uh, accidentally left the gate open and something went uh, there and popped their heads off like uh, corks. Oh, really cool. We had uh, that. The, yeah, we had that. It, Raccoons, man, they are the coolest murderers of all time because oh. one, they do it with thumbs. <laughs> they get fingers. They literally have hands. <laughs> they, they pull the faces off the chickens. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you? Can I tell you one of the funniest things I've seen, like ever, is watching? They have you ever seen this? Like you, like you just brought up a raccoon joke, so I have to bring this up. Have you ever seen the videos of the raccoons trying to eat cotton candy? Yeah. <laughs> and it's in the water and it disappears. <laughs> and they're like, I don't know where it went. And they go for more and they do it again. Because they wash their hands before they eat anything. That is hilarious. I have a friend uh, who immediately wants to uh, genocide style kill anything that has opposable hand movement because um, he's like it's too close. You can't get and let anything get that close to us. It's like in the WWF where like the like the Rock is there and he's letting Stone Cold like win all these matches. You're like he's gonna come for you. You gotta fucking take him out <laughs> early. Uh, yeah. So monkeys, like the knees, raccoons, 
Anything that could go like this, we should kill right now, is, is my friend it's, Matt's perspective. Abs- so, well, Absolutely. A couple episodes ago, we were talking about how brutal monkeys are, chimpanzees and stuff. Oh, and just to... Uh, started. Just, just some more evidence that, um, you know, Google listens to you. On any of my social feed, media feeds, I started getting chimpanzee videos. And they're all usually pretty cute. But That's one of them... Right. Oh, yeah. One of them was, watch this chimpanzee murder this smaller monkey. And he just grabbed it by the arm. Oh. He was like, remember Bam Bam from Flintstones? I saw that. He was like, smack, I saw smack. That. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy it fuck. It was terrible. Ugh. <laughs> And then oh. it just shows a couple frames later, a couple scenes later, he's just eating the arm like a chicken wing. I was like, oh, man. Oh, I didn't need dude, that. But for every I chimpanzee know. eating the face I off know. of a lady who's inappropriately touching it, there's <laughs> also the bonobo monkeys, which, fuck. You ever seen those fucking things? Oh, those things are so awesome. So they're... Are those the things with the big two... dick noses? No, no, don't have big dick noses. These are, uh, they look like um, kind of skinnier gorillas. So anyways, look them up, folks. So, because you will after what I'm about to say is a fact. There are <laughs> but, there are but two animals in the world that fuck exclusively for pleasure. Us and bonobo chimps. Don't and dolphins? boy, do My they man, fucking right throw there. it down. It's like we're uh, distant so, too so to I'm their number about one. Bobo, bobo. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to debunk that. Do you remember the are video you really? from like, do you remember the video from like 10 or 15 years ago of the monkey using the frog as a uh, pocket pussy? <laughs> Don't tell me that wasn't for pleasure. No, no, no. no, no. I didn't see, see that one. <laughs> you're talking about a very, very, very common thing in the wild, which is backdooring your way into some pussy, which means that you accidentally <laughs> fell into a pit and pussy goes all around you, and you're like, ah! <laughs> but you like it because you're there. Bonobo chimps seek it. Like, if you watch them, they're all like, blah, 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 in each other, and they're all rolling around all day. It's all they do. It's, like a, it's the yeah, greatest man. thing in the world. Jeez, man. Yeah, it's regular like a, monkeys just beat off a lot, which is yeah. which is weird. I mean, or cool, depending on what you're into. But. <laughs> <laughs> a monkey orgy. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen, like, the, uh, the bonobo chimps. I, I don't know how to say this without uh, being too vulgar for your show, even. Uh, but it's like, um, you know, if you grab someone by the ankles and they grab your ankles and you roll down a hill? Yeah. <laughs> Closer. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, yeah. that's what they do. <laughs> now, the real question is, is it, <laughs> is it okay? Are they okaying it or is it not It's okay? more than okay. It's the it's most more than okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. like, in the United so, States, if like you're under... It's yeah. like a party. It's not. It's not like a war camp, right? No, no, no. Total party in no, okay. an age okay. limitless party. Like there, it doesn't. You, they don't give a fuck. There is a it's like two little ones hanging off the titties of the like uh, rollers and margaritas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they live in the dream, dude. You ever heard the aristocrats joke? <laughs> Bob Saget. They're sponsored by freaking Vaseline. <laughs> It's just like that. Oh, God. All right, Wayne, take me on back. <laughs> Where am I? So, tell me. Tell, tell me about what got you into comedy. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, my, uh, my, my household growing up, like all of us, right? Um, my household growing up was probably a, a, strong, a strong reason why. No. Um, I got into comedy. So um, how old are you guys, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 36. 36. 32. 32. So I'm 38. And um, when I was growing up, I was in fourth or fifth grade when Adam Sandler dropped his comedy CDs. Mm -hmm. And, like, that was the thing to do. Like, after you bought MC Hammer's CD, you went out and you bought Adam (laughs) Sandler's, right? (laughs) So I just obsessed over it, right? We're told with Willie, you know, everything from top to bottom, the whole thing. It's timeless. And... Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I just always saw him as such a relatable person as a comedian that it just seemed so much fun, right? And 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 it is, right? And so as I got older, there was actually a famous movie that came out, um, and it assimilates with my family name, and um, I ended up, you know, having a nickname from it. And it was just so cool because it was like, I love this. This came out. This was great. Everything's awesome. Right. So moving forward now, I always wanted to do it, always wanted to do it, but it was like, you know, 
I didn't have the balls like some of these younger comedians do to put it all on the line for this because, you know, if it doesn't work out, what do you do? So I, I chose the path of security first and I went after getting my electrical license and this and that ended up having a kid super early, not on purpose, you know, um, kind of got into that, you know, routine, which I wasn't upset about. It was, was, you know, best thing that ever happened. I got a 12 year old now. So, but, um, it was pushed off for so long and I just loved it. You know, and um, I never had time off from work to, like, focus on it or, like, get into it or take a class or do this or do that. So back in 2022, um, I tore my bicep off the bone. Cool. Yeah. 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 And as an electrician, you know, you're like, damn, I'm at home, no pay, no nothing, money going out the door. I have nothing in the world to live for right now. I'm trying to support a family and I got to stay home for six months and let this heal because this is what I do. Um, and best thing ever happened. I, I, I watched comedy. I was sitting at home. I was doing nothing all day. And I just finally said to myself, I need something to do. And I'm going to go after this dream and this goal that I always fucking wanted to do. And Mm -hmm. I took a class, um, you know, one thing led into another. I met some really great, awesome people early on, um, you know, and uh, it just made me want to do it more. And then I had, you know, a small window of, you know, is this what I want to do? It's not really as much fun as it I want. I thought it was going to be, but once again, I stayed positive. I stayed, you know, moving forward. I stayed with all the, you know, I, I did, did what you talk about. I, 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 I just, when I was at my worst, I was at everyone's, you know, praise. I when I when I'm doing the worst in comedy, I praise everybody for their accolades, and that's what got me out of my dark times. And it just rolled into being dark times turned into just what I want to proclaim in comedy. If I'm doing good or not, like I just I want to see both of you guys be on a Netflix special because I can say, dude. These were the guys that I know from then, and they're up there now. And I'm not going to freaking change my praise for you. I don't care where I go. I don't care where I end up. I'm going to keep trying my hardest, and I'm only going to get out what I put in, right? So, anyways, that's what got me into it. That's why I'm here, and that's kind of my freaking mantra, you know? Hmm. So, who was the class class you took? Do do you remember who the teacher was? I'd love to say names. I just don't want to say names when I'm on here. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, but I, I, it was—it's a really good uh, gentleman. Um, very, I, I, you know, great, um, great teacher. You know, good um, mentor. Uh, I didn't do any of the big ones. Um, this was kind of small, you know. But um, you know, he's been a friend ever since. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Um, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty lucky to have had, um, cross paths and it was by mistake. <laughs> it was it, my, 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 my meeting him was completely by mistake, which is the best part of all of it. You know, I went to the winner's circle to go up because that was the only one I knew of. I drove by it my whole life going to the beach. I'm like, I'm going to do comedy. I'm going to do comedy. I'm going to do comedy. So I went there. I talked to, uh, you know, how to get on. And I tried, um, I, I, I got a spot two, three times. And I backed out, backed out. And then the third (laughs) time I ended up puking in the parking lot Hmm. and not going on. But I ran into one of my really, really close comedy friends outside of Jay and Sean. And, uh, she just finished a class and she said, and, and it was her performing night. So she was doing her initial on stage performing night after her class. And I met him and it was just, you know, they say, you know, you manifest destiny. I feel like it was destiny that night to, to, to see her meet them and then just progress from there. So mm-hmm. that's awesome. I, I never took a, um, I haven't taken a, a comedy class yet. I took a, a hosting class with Mike Trobus, which was great. Oh, nice! That's um, awesome. That's very yeah, yeah, it was good stuff. Um, I, I, it's been since August, and I still talk about it. That's how much I, I Dude, really awesome. appreciated that class. Yeah, we have an open mic beneficial. drinking game. If you hear the word Mike Atrobus come out of Wayne's mouth, you must take a shot of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I've met Mike a bunch of times. <laughs> I've I've met Mike a bunch of times. He's a nice guy. He really is. Mm-hmm. He's hustling yeah, too. You see him on on the Patriots game. You ever see him on there? 
I've seen the posts on Facebook, um, yeah, him working the games, but so I don't watch uh, football. He but. did the yeah. coolest. So there's been a couple times where I've seen a, a guy I consider a professional comedian, like go, I, I go, oh, that's another level. Oops. And one of them was Mike. After the show, he was talking about talking to comics, which was really grateful. Uh, we were grateful for about, uh, you know, how to take the next step or, you know, how to make your writing better. And he said, you have to know your character. It's kind of like finding your voice, knowing your character. And as he was describing, he's like, I know who I am. I know exactly my character. His voice broke into his stage character. Like what he didn't even know he was doing. He just talked about how he knew his character and his voice started to crack like he does on stage and all that. And I was like, holy shit. Like he's just going into it. It's almost like, um, I opened for Casey Crawford and he does this nice. thing where, like, off stage, he's, he's uh, yeah, he's awesome. Off stage, he's you know, himself and all that. When he goes on stage, he hunches over into the position, and his voice gets a little higher. Yeah. And he's a hat, it's right? like, mm-hmm. yeah, he's got the hat and all that. And it, I'm, it makes me wonder, like, man, maybe there's like a, a mindset that you gotta get into to uh, be yourself properly on stage, where you're like, all right, this is the character I gotta be. You yeah. know, the character has to be consistent. Do you think that just comes with it? Because I'm noticing that as, as I, I get more comfortable walking up on stage, I I lose those butterflies that that start that I started with, and it's almost like uh, what was that? What was it? What was that movie? The the, the when the kid turned into the wolf, Teen Wolf, like that yep. shitty. Yes, I feel like I'm just like slowly turning into Teen Wolf. And walking up there. Just just something slightly <laughs> different. Like it's me. <laughs> It's just slightly different, and I don't yeah. realize I'm doing it. But it's it's still morphing. It's not what it's. I think it's going to be in five or ten years, one hundred percent. But I feel myself changing as I go up there. Like, okay, I'm going from Wayne to Wayne the comic. That's uh, it. And it's just it's just slight little changes. That I, and I noticed that a couple of weeks ago when I went up to, to Strange Brew. Yeah. Um, as I was stepping that on the stage, great, I was like, well, I feel different. Yeah. Strange Brew is awesome, man. I, I, well, sorry. I'm really old. They used to have an, an amazing bar down in the basement back when I was like, two, this is 2000, I don't know, five, six, six. Yeah. They used to have, I was there all the time. They'd be a selection. And then I got into comedy and I'm like, they have a comedy attic. I've been coming in for like freaking <laughs> 20 years and I didn't know you guys did comedy. Like, why aren't we promoting this more on the street or that, here that's or there? A- that's a big thing. Um, so I feel like if it wasn't for Anthony seeking it, so that was one of the big, I think one of the big reasons I, I never started before I did was like, where do you go? How do you know? Mm. Nobody's yeah. actually promoting open mics outside of Facebook groups that are for people looking for open mics. Right. Why are they not like uh, we need audience, where- dude. Yeah, the first place you know, I went you... to was Giggles. I walked into Giggles and I went, oh, "How wow. do I perform here?" And they're like, "Get the fuck out of here!" And I was like, <laughs> "Who are you, dude? If you were Michael Clark, get out of here!" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, "Hi, I'm here for to do comedy for you," and they're like, "You have no fucking idea what this is." So, but you yeah, know what? To... Honest, honestly, though, I mean, they they have the clout <laughs> to, to, yep. to yeah. be able to say that one. It's not yep. because they're you know subjecting anyone. It's because they're they're just magical. Like they they every every night of the week, dude. They got a show going on, sold out. It's like oh my god. I know. God. I went across the street to the Kowloons too, but I can't tell you what they yeah. said to me because I would get pre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so wait a second. Hold on a second. So you walked in asking to be on a show? Yeah, I didn't know. Like I was like, when's the open? Like you guys have a mic where you let us uh, still oh, go on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so and they were I, uh, yeah. they were like. Yeah, you know, I can't, I'm not going to say it. I can't do it. <laughs> they were, yeah. They were mad. Yeah, so. What? <coughs> Why is that not a thing um, with comedy clubs? You know, like, obviously Laugh Boston's doing an open mic now. Yeah. But yeah, you would think, in like, front of the fucking bathroom. It's such a badass yeah. move. They're like, oh, you guys <laughs> well, want a real comedy club to do an open mic? Yeah, you do it in front of the fucking shitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I'm going to plead the fifth right now. Just for FYI. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna plead the fifth on this subject. Hey, I'll do it every week. I will fucking no. let them shit in my mouth to do that stage. <laughs> no, I, I I I so here's the deal, right? This is why we put so much thought into what we're doing for our brand. Mm-hmm. For for everything you guys are saying right now. You know, and but I but obviously Kowloon, they're they don't do open mics, you know, Giggles doesn't do open mics, but like nope. the ones that are and the ones that are trying, like Come on, man. Like, we can land rockets on their tails. 
Like, why can't we figure out a platform or a software or a way to make this fair with a lottery for people, dude? Instead of wasting their fucking life that everyone has to do a job every day because we're not fucking comedians yet. And, you know, it's like, it kind of just like, it, it's like, everybody's just half-ditch effort shit, you know? It's mm-hmm. just, I don't know. And I'm not knocking any any platform, any place. I, I won't do that to, today. But what I'm saying is it made me realize a lot of things and aspects of things that I would do different, right? So, like, with children, you lead by example. So this is how we want this to be because this is what we want. We don't care what you do, but what we want is we want everyone to leave feeling satisfied and feeling equal, period. Mm-hmm. You know? I think it's important. I, I like the idea um, of you know make, trying to make sure everybody stays there for the full time too, because that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Uh, here's an, here's another shot you can take because I bring this up all the time. When you have somebody go up, on, you know, show up five minutes before they're supposed to go up, they go up and then they're handing the mic off and then walking out the door. Oh, don't forget they got their free water too. Yes, oh, take another shot. There's another one. I'll tell you. Right, <laughs> People will be hammered at the end of this if we go long enough, I'll tell you. <laughs> Dude. Oh, my God. It's just – it's so frustrating to me. It's like these people didn't get this building for free. These people don't heat the fucking building for free. These people don't keep the lights on for free. They're running a business, dude. Like, I know you're doing what you're doing to practice at this, and I don't know if you just can't, you know, in your – realm of life give a five dollar bill for a coke and stay for 10 minutes but like come on man like these places are like toilets for you like you're just taking a shit and leaving like you like like it's supposed to be there for you like you should be going and supporting these places that's Mm -hmm. where we learn man that's where we act that's where we get our grinding of our teeth like it's just I'm, I, maybe people in situationally can't afford to do that, and they can't afford to get there, and they can't afford to. But I know a lot of the guys in our community that are not doing amazingly well in life. They're getting by life, but they're the last ones that are going to walk in there and take a water and leave. They're going to be the ones that start and finish there. Watch everybody, give everybody props, and hand it off. And I know mm-hmm. you guys know exactly the people I'm talking about outside mm-hmm. of me, Jay and Sean. Oh, hell yeah. You know. you know what I noticed is, like, people that somehow, you fucking young pieces of shit, us oldies with the kids, uh, we tend to stay longer and fucking give more time when we have way less time. Like, I, yeah. I see some people go in and out immediately, and I'm like, you're going to go beat off in your parents' fucking basement. <laughs> like, that's all. Right. You're going to go home, and you're going <laughs> to play you Xbox going? and beat off. And right. most likely drop ice cream on your chest and look down and go, oh, no. And that's going to, instead of just staying an extra 10 minutes and giving, like you said, $5 to the nice waitress, like the one from right. the point who looks like the girl from the office, cause, and she's super awesome, irrespective of that. Right. But you got to yeah. give her an extra $10 because of that, because I love that trail. 100%. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not like we're in L.A. where you're, you're going to go hit four of the mics tonight. You know? no. Exactly. <clears throat> And there's no talent looking for you there. So, like, right. what are you doing <laughs> right. it for? Like, grind your teeth and do one good one instead of doing three shitty ones and fucking trashing the places you go through to get there. It doesn't make sense, you know? And I don't know. Whatever. I'm old. I'm grumpy. I'm crotchety. Whatever. But <laughs> yeah. That's what the podcast is about. Man, it's called right? Old Stupid Fucks. That's what we call this. Old the Fucks. Name. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> old, angry fucks. Dumb, old, stupid, rotten fucks. <laughs> yep. With yeah. children that ruin everything. Dot com. <laughs> Dot yeah. com. Yeah, we fucking we do. Zero well, the, stars will not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> you you actually have uh, the uh, I think it's called that. It might, it might be called something different. A new podcast coming out actually that is going to be really fucking cool. We're excited for it. It's called Real or No Reels, which is going to be it's open platform, which means they can talk about fucking anything they want, but it's going to be comedic in nature. Look at that at. Real or no reels. Remember the Z at the end because this... Z, baby! Yeah, exactly. Because if you do an S, you are a cis white male piece of shit. And uh, the right. Z is for the rest of us. And so- Listen, we are, we are demographically in- inclusive. That is, honestly, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm from an area with a strong Hispanic dom- denomination. And I have the Z on everything because I want the Hispanic community to be part of my team. Mm-hmm. So the Z differentiates a lot be honest with you i put the z on wires so 
I put a lot of effort into being a dumb electrician. And, uh, when I was, when I was d- devising the, the stage name, I just had everything. I had wire nut. I had power. I had this. I had that. I did. Finally came down to just wires, right? <laughs> And I love it. I laughed at Wayne so Ruiz, hard earlier because he fucking Mr. Rue <laughs> <laughs> sweeped in and said, "You got to put a Z on it, bro." And I'm like, <laughs> "What?" He goes, "Put a Z on it." He goes, "Watch this." He gets on his phone, <laughs> fucking pops it up, dude. Mr. Rue, it's like fucking the first ten on freaking Google. I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" He goes, "No one has it." So he goes, "Check everywhere." Check on everything. Check every platform. Type in Tommy Wires in the search bar. Nothing, 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 nothing. I spent like the next five hours of my life locking down every single platform with Tommy Wires. I got to say, I, I just realized that about your name. I, 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 knew, it, I knew it couldn't be your real name. Um, <laughs> and he did this just earlier, and I wanted real... to punch him in the face because I sent him last night. I was like, "Oh yeah, Tommy Wires up there." Uh, he, he, I was talking about your bits because I thought they were so good, and I mentioned one where you were talking about being an electrician and all that. And still, yeah. that was last night. He didn't say anything. Yeah. Then today, yeah, yeah. in the middle of the day, he goes, "You think that he says wires because he's an electrician?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw your reel about being an electrician. No, I became an electrician because I my family is wires. My my great 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 grandfather <laughs> came on the Mayflower. He was the first electrician on the Mayflower. And, and I'm also going to say because this is how like clueless I am, Mister Rue. I've yeah, been pronouncing yeah. it Mister the whole time. Like it's, I'm like call- Mister Mister Rue. That's what I always thought. And then he's like, no, dumbass. My last name's Ruiz. When I was in the services, it was Mr. Ru. They they hyphenate everything. So he got out of it. Man, he's he's got a bag of tricks, I'll tell you that much. He's got stories for days. So he, uh, so what ended up happening was he hyphenated it, and that was his name. So, like, it was always, you know, in his brain, it was M-R-R-U, right? Mr. Ru, right? Then he, I'll let him tell you more about it, but he has a lot of tricks in his bag and, um, coming up with a name, um, for all of them way back in the day, um, really kind of, you know, separated him from others. So it was, it was a genius move, you know? We'll have to I have actually, him come on and come up with a name for Anthony. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I you probably haven't didn't hear, but uh, I had a long diatribe on the last podcast because Wayne and his translucent Casper skin was telling me that I need to change my name to a stage name because it's Eugenio and people have a hard time saying it sometimes. I was like, so okay. let me get this straight. So instead of you hosts, people, comics who I can recite all of your fucking acts because I've seen them so many times, asking me, hey, Anthony, your name slightly confusing the first time you hear it. Why don't you tell me what it is? And I'll know it forever. We've been in the room for 20 hours. No, no, instead of that, change your fucking name. Make it easier for my white lips to say, my white thin fucking lips to say, call yourself Anthony Michaels, <laughs> which is what Wayne said because it's my middle name. your entire generation of family gene, yeah. We're yeah, going to change you right into the bearded goat. <laughs> yeah, take up your grandfather and take off his head and hit it with a golf club into a bald eagle. You no, fucking- it's cool. It's fucking cool. I'll tell my grandfather. Let me call my grandfather. Let him know his name isn't fucking good enough for you. <laughs> I know. Get yourself a last name. How about that, Wayne? You two yeah. first name having piece of shit. <laughs> All right. So hold on. Let me still hear you. I gotta, I'm, I'm a little slightly confused because I didn't see the last one. So you, Wayne, you suggested to Anthony to have a stage name. Well, that, that was a long. That was a while back when. Because uh, here's the thing: every time Anthony goes somewhere, he writes his name down, um, and sometimes he writes it up phonetically. Sometimes people go up and say, "Hey, how no do you see your na- say your name?" And yeah, no, not many people, but uh, and and it's Eugenio, okay. and many times people say, not that, like Eugenio or yeah, Gen- Geneo. I don't know. I can't remember what was the best. Juan what was the other it, one? That- yeah, Juan from six hundred three said it the absolute craziest one time. He was like, bringing everybody to, bring to the stage, Eugerio. No, what, what was <laughs> the one? That- my first thing, just that. What was the one that? We were joking with like it was going to be your oh, stage name. Laugh Boston. Oh yeah, yeah. 
So I was at Laugh Boston right before I went on. The guy, so the guy's like, "You're next." I was like, "Okay." He goes up and he called me Donde Rosario, and and I, <laughs> Donde Rosario, and I went, um, and I didn't say anything. I didn't move. Yeah, that's wrong. I was like, well, I didn't. Even, I thought he was calling someone else because it was so different. And he looked at me. He goes, "No," and I went, "What?" <laughs> 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 I can't go up now. No fucking way. Yeah, but yeah. Like, Sorry, where are you? <laughs> yeah, and then I had a feud with Ben at uh, Strange Brew Hashtag. Well, Brazilian uh, stripper. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah team. Uh, you're either team Ben or you're team Anthony, like team Jacob and uh, the other one. <laughs> but Adio. Edward, yeah. So that all happened, and Wayne's like, you know, uh, we'll make this easier if you just change your name to a stage name. And, uh, yeah, that pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to make it easier. Uh, you were just getting really butthurt so, about it. But understandably. Yeah. I never got so, butthurt about it. What are you talking so, about? You did too. So, I went to the dentist one time, and the lady was uh, of foreign descent, and she called me Vanny Roussel, and I got a little butthurt. Uh, I was mm, like, hey, uh, come on. Yeah. No, no, I'm going to get it. So, yeah, I went, when, so I went out for like the first two, three months with my name, and – it's a long story, but I decided that, you know what, like, it's not that big of a deal to me. I didn't know anything. I didn't know the scene. I didn't know all these, you know, what do you call them? You know, like, uh, things that everybody just knows not to do. I didn't know. Like, like, so I was like, personally for me, I just wanted me to be, um, searchable. <laughs> like that was my reason for doing it. I just, mm. cause what my attack into comedy was basically, you know, I'm going to get stage time however I put the effort into getting onto stage time, but I'm not going to really know anybody until, like, I start meeting people at all these mics. That's what I thought at first. And then I just kind of, like, had, like, the light dawn on uh, Marble Rock, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to open up all the social platforms, and I'm just going to hammer everybody and see if they want to be my friend, and I'm going to freaking promote them, see where they're going, seeing what they're doing, learning from action, just seeing what they're doing. So... But when I did that idea, that was like two, three months into it, I picked a stage name and I'm at a show and I'm not a show. I'm at an open mic and it's kind of a prestigious one. And, you know, the, the main guy comes over to me. He's like, why is, huh? What's up with the why is dang? And I'm like, I'm an electrician, dude. I just, you know, I feel like it's easier. You know, there's actually someone else with my same last name in the scene. That's pretty good. And I'm like, you know what? Let me show you. Pulled my phone out. I typed in on Google. I said, type in your Safari right now. Tommy Y is with a Z. He hit it. And like I said, just like Ruiz, I had the top seven plus my link tree on it. And he's like, you've only been doing this for four months? And I'm like, yeah. Yep. Just got a hashtag Tommy Y is with a Z and you'll be on there too. <laughs> you get Indonesian <laughs> baseball players if you Google my name, unfortunately. That's See, all. that's what I'm saying though. Like there's so many people like you and I feel like, Dude, just go. Jump off it, man. Go be Anthony Geo. You know, like, who gives a fuck? Like, you know what I mean? Like, just make it something that's not anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I got this um, counterculture uh, in inside Brown mentality where I, I told Wayne I even made a little graphic for it. When if I Whenever I film whatever first comedy special that I do, even if it's five minutes, it's going to be called Say My Fucking Name Right. And it's going to – I have a picture of me looking up into the clouds <laughs> with it. With it I respect that. <laughs> I respect that, man. I don't. I'm just. I was going to do it, but I heard Sebastian Metascalco, and I was like, okay, you can be anything you want. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He's in New York, though. (laughs) That's the only. That's the only. Got to get there. You know, exactly. You know, we're just a bunch of bums in the North Shore or South Shore or Western Mass trying to friggin' hustle, you know? Yeah, I'm building my name with feuds. I like to I like to create lots of feuds uh, <laughs> in the industry because I build my name that way. I mean, Lloyd, uh, we had our Lloyd feud. That's Actually, an angle. Uh, oh man! So uh, yeah, you you oh, have wait, a bunch wait, of like, let's WWF go the list. <laughs> let's go down the list, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got Ben from Strange Brew. We had a feud. Lloyd. Well, oh, me and Lloyd no. had an accidental feud. It was Lloyd, definitely WWE. Like, it, so Lloyd's was Smack accidental. Down. Yeah, it was like I was uh, in a wrestling match and he fell off of the bleachers and killed me. Uh, like it was that. Oh, like it was God. an accident, but I died well, the same. <laughs> but yeah, I no. love Lloyd, man. He is like the greatest. Like I learned my positivity. Like I'm, I'm ten percent at his hundred, bro. Uh, that yeah. kid, man. No, I say kid. That guy, he's 
he's just he doesn't know how much he is loved in this comedy scene and, and he actually he he basically beat me to death with a baseball bat full of positivity really if you think about it like what he did, yeah. <laughs> he did. that's the best way to say it <laughs> he yeah. filled you he up with the love bus and thing. drove right over you he just tried to do the best thing he could possibly do for the world uh yeah. just if the world did involve anthony <laughs> yeah yeah definitely <laughs> Definitely. It was like when you have to tell AI, like, do the best thing from society and it's to kill society to make the world yeah. better. He did that Dude. to me for, to make the comedy better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, man. So, that has, so Lloyd. Um, well, that's one. We got Lloyd down. What do you got, Ben? What else do we yeah. got? <laughs> we got Ben for saying my name right but making a joke about it. And that just got, Wayne said I get butt hurt. I'm like, no, I don't. But I got a feud with Ben about it. So I guess I do. <laughs> um, have you rectified these of, ones? Oh, yeah, yeah. So like, They've no, been rectified. No, I just got to cut more promos WWE style, so I'm keeping them going just so I can be like, Ben, where are you, brother? You gonna come over? We're gonna fucking <laughs> summer slam with yeah, Anthony in the cage match. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna drop him in from a helicopter. <laughs> now I'm gonna dress up like the... an eagle and fall yeah. on motherfucking top ropes and die. <laughs> you're gonna be standing there. You're gonna be the. You're gonna be the freaking. You're gonna be standing there waiting for the lions to eat you, but the ants are gonna attack you instead. <laughs> Do you think that Owen Hart, when he was dressed like an eagle and he was falling, oh. death, do you think he was like? I wish I was wearing anything me, else. Dude. <laughs> I wish nugget, I was dude, you're gonna freaking shit on the nugget right now. Oh, Lloyd's really oh gonna hate God. you again, bro. Lloyd's gonna fucking jump on this and fucking beat your ass. Dude, we actually like, touched God upon that on the Lloyd episode. We, we did. I it was. It's just well, ridiculous I, that. <laughs> It reminds me of, you remember when, uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie that The Goods? That was terrible. I watched that fucking live, bro. Yeah, yeah, well, did you go, that's ridiculous, God kill him right now? Oh, dude. <laughs> that yeah, was, like, know? so traumatic as a kid, man. I, uh, that was probably in, like, 02 or 99 or something. That was yeah, bad. Yeah, it was in the 90s, too. I'm sure. Ugh. I think it was Summer Slam, Summer Slam 97, I think it was. was what, yeah, what, it, was, it wasn't yeah. funny until the Statue of Limitations ended when they made the movie The Goods, uh, where... Uh, um, Will okay. Ferrell jumps out of a plane, dresses Abraham Lincoln with dildos yeah. all around him, because uh, it, instead of a parachute, his dildos come out, and he's like, "Oh, this is how I always drew it up: fall out of a plane with a bunch of dildos oh. all around me." <laughs> and I oh, watch it like no. that's how Owen Hart died. <laughs> the same yeah, fucking man. thing. <laughs> Oh, terrible. Terrible. Yeah, I think I broke Lloyd's heart Telling when we were talking about that. Do you remember what I said? We, yeah. like, we were talking about Owen Hart falling off the rafters, and then he started talking about um, Stone Dildos. Cold getting pile drive. I'm like, yeah, who pile drive him? <laughs> remember when he pile, got pile drive and broke yeah. his neck? Yeah, I was yeah. like, pile drive. He's like, Owen Hart. I mean, no, 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 no. Who, who no. broke? Who broke? Uh, Austin's heart uh, neck, and he goes, neck. Oh, that was Owen Hart. I was like, oh, I was talking about a different broken neck. <laughs> His face I, did, I like, said right oh. after that, God killed Owen Hart for breaking Stone Cold's neck. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So You're bad. killing me, guys. <laughs> Do I just take a positive over here? <laughs> uh, next week, we bring up the latest celebrity death. <laughs> I make fun of Oh, that. man. That worked out so really well for Ari Shafir. <laughs> what got you guys into it, just real quick? Yeah, so uh, me and Wayne used to play video games. Well, we still do uh, on uh, on like Elden Ring and those ki- type of games and Dark Souls. We yep. play together, and nice. we would talk shit the whole time. And we'd always say that our Morgan Freeman, uh, I'm Morgan Freeman. He's um, yeah. Who's the other one? To Sammy Tracy Jason. Morgan. Tracy Morgan. Yeah. You- no, Tracy Morgan wasn't in the fucking bucket list. Who was the other one? Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, Robert. Oh, oh no. Um... I see. I was going to say Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholas. Jack Nicholas. Jack Nicholson. Nope, Jack there wasn't either one of those. It was um, Tommy Jones. Something. Oh yeah, Tom yeah, Jones? yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom, yeah, Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tommy Lee Jones. There it is. Woo. Yeah. So yeah, nice. uh, Wayne, you're Tommy Lee Jones. Fucking obviously, you droopy dog, wicked motherfucker. But anyways, we uh, <laughs> were both in the the bucket list, and because we uh, Wayne that. thought he was going to die from diabetes. And I thought I was gonna... <laughs> he keeps drinking that fucking sprite. He's gone. Jesus Christ! It's not sprite. <laughs> yep. I got my so fucking we... Peloton waiting for me after this, dude. <laughs> you in the fucking. 
And we basically had kids, and we were like, well, the clock's ticking. Grim Reaper's behind us. we got to start oh, cooking man. off our bucket list. So it was really one night. I was thinking about doing comedy for a while. I went to Wayne's birthday, uh, kid's birthday party, and um, I was telling Wayne jokes I was writing on the side, nothing for stage yet. And he was like, that was really funny, man. You should really do it. It was the only reason why I had any confidence was because of Wayne. And eventually I, uh, tried, That's awesome, I went to Giggles. That's awesome, by the way, Wayne. Yep. I went to Giggles, and they were like, get the fuck out of here. Uh, sorry, I mean, I tell you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I went online, and I found in Portland, Free Street uh, has in a beautiful stage, nicest comedy room around. And really? I went there, and Mo, yeah, it is really cool. Um, okay. That place is so Portland, nice. Portland, Maine, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. They are just um, a very cunty audience. That's right, Portland. Fuck you. A new oh, well, Portland, I mean, Maine. Woo! Yeah, Fuck you, you got to write to you, what do they say, right? You got to write to your audience, right? You know. Yeah, and I don't write to the Portland audience. Unfortunately, they did not like me at all. Uh, but I went there for the first time, and I sent Wayne a picture of the stage, and he was so jealous he almost like drove down there. Um, and oh, three days, it's like an hour and forty five minutes from my house. So I was like, oh, I could make it for that. I'd, I'd be in for that if there's a group going. Man, that sounds dope. Yeah, we should go up there. It is a good time. Maybe with our better comedy. Uh, like this is the thing. I love Portland. Because there's 60 mics in Portland, and all the people and comics there are so nice. The problem is, is like I went up there a couple weeks ago, and one of the comics went up, and he's like, and then the girl came in the room, and she said the c word, and I was behind him, and I was like, is this guy being saying the fucking c word instead of in this room of comedy? And, <laughs> and uh, do you and know where I, you are, sir? They're gonna behead you in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, and then the I went on stage. The guys are going to you before the women. <laughs> Definitely. And then you saw me last night, Tommy, and I told the same joke about how a prostitute jizzed on my chest. And <laughs> were... me, and my cousin, me and my cousin were the only two in the room peeing that pants, dude. Yeah. I remember. He's like, you didn't know. Look, you know, a pro- you know, she peed on my chest. She <laughs> jizzed on my chest. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, that was a great joke, dude. That's a good joke. <laughs> Thank you, but they didn't think uh, so up there. They were like, "What yeah, the we're... fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> I say it hey, all man. the time, but my first set, there was this big fat girl with blue hair sitting right in the center of the crowd, and I yep. was like, "You know who Tesla hates are the gays." And I went into that, which is not a, it wasn't a great joke, <laughs> but there happened to be a Tesla that murdered two gay guys who got in the back seat and had sex in it. It I'm like it. If... I wonder if the pain in open mic pain is because of you. It is, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just 100%. kidding. No, no, it is. But listen, I'm not listen. I'm not saying that Tesla hates gays, okay? But I am saying that in Texas two years ago, two guys got in the back seat of a Tesla and it was on autopilot, and then it went to 110 miles an hour into a wall and killed both of them. That's, I, right. that's all I'm saying. It did. And that, it did. It, it did. did. I remember that. Yeah. It happened, and it it yeah, wanted it did to. Happen. And that was my first joke, uh, basically, was that. And this girl in the front was like, how fucking dare you? <laughs> and then me and Wayne went to Jamaica Plain, and we did it in front. And I looked behind me, and there was a gay flag. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, then we retired that material, because it's not right to do, folks, okay? Yeah, no, no, okay. Inside. Don't bring that Let to mind. Let the Tesla just do it and us think it's fucking technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh man no it's it's it's, it's a tough thing man. it's a comedy is so subjective and i get it you know like we don't want everybody you know we want you to come to a comedy show we don't want you to come with your freaking panties on you know tight and you know but you gotta you gotta also like you also have to be slightly considerate to a decent size if there's a if if it's a major group that you're going after, right? And you and, but like I always say, man, if you're gonna go plus, you gotta go minus. Like you can't go minus without going plus. You gotta ride that fine line, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel that's my personal opinion. I, I mean, everybody's got their own opinion, and, and I totally respect everybody's choices. I don't. It's um, it's not my world. It's your world. But <clears throat> you know, I I, I think I, I I agree. I agree with you 100. percent So I. You can always say things without saying it, right? You know? um, th- there's, I don't say this. Like, I I agree that you. Can, so my personal opinion is, I think you can, I think anything can be joked about as long as it's not said in hate. Yeah, and it's clever. Yeah, um, I don't want to hear some rehashed racial jokes or gay jokes or trans jokes. Right? I don't want to hear that stuff. But if you have a, if you have a fresh take on it and it's just done and fun and it's not. Like, uh, you know, fuck the trans people. 
Um, right. Clip that out, everybody. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Bye, if man. it's not that, you know, it's fine. You know, it's just as long as it's clever and not hateful. Um, well, yeah, punching down is the, is the idea. Up. But you you can punch down as long as you lift up. Meaning, like when I any punchline I have in it that is about if it's about gay or when I used to do the Bud Weiser joke turn when that was popular. In that, it was always lifting the person I'm talking about. It was always like, I don't understand this because they're better than me. If you have that perspective when you're telling the joke, people can laugh at it. But if you're like, that's yeah. not right is the synopsis of your joke, then it's yeah. going to come off as hateful. That's why exactly. when, like in the beginning when you were talking about your mic, if when you were first saying that when I was first starting comedy, it would have made me so nervous to go perform there only because I'd be like, what, what can't I say? I don't know what to do. Am I going to be too rude and all that? Then after a couple months, you go, no, you know the stuff that right. he's talking about. It's a pretty, yeah. you know when you're crossing that line most of the time. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and listen, we're not like, <clears throat> we're, not, we're not trying to um, artistically extinguish anybody's personal choices on what they want to do. But we just don't want to offend our owner of the location we got to you know the mm-hmm. pleasure and in, in the luck of being able to do it at and this is her this is this is their request they don't want rape jokes they don't want racial jokes and they don't want any degradation to anybody that's in the audience too difficultly without being a funny joke if you're just going to harass someone because they're wearing a pink shirt get the fuck out of here like that's just you know what i mean like yeah. you can make fun of someone with a pink shirt and i'm not saying i'm not i'm picking a pink shirt out of the blue honestly by the way i'm saying like someone's wearing <laughs> plaid someone's wearing fucking you know whatever you know what i mean people like to do that flannel you know? yeah like yeah. we don't want to we don't want the we don't want the r word we don't want the r word ever used for anybody in any kind of a joke because it's just not a politically correct word there's a lot of them and we don't want it brought into the space it, just because of the fact of the aspect of of positivity, right? Yep. We just we want you to do your stuff creatively. We're not extinguishing that, but we, we don't make people want, feel good. Yeah, and we want you to bring your family. Why don't you bring your mom? Why don't you bring your dad? Why don't you bring your cousins? Why don't you bring your cousins that have sixteen year old daughters that can come to a show? And the whole show isn't about dicks and pussies the whole time. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, there's a little bit of that. Don't worry, we're not gonna like say you can't do your jokes. But like, if your entire joke is about you know whatever a five you minute long dick joke or something like that, it can make exactly, you one of those. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can say swears, but you can say them subjectively at the right times. You don't have to swear the whole set. You know what I, I know, mean? I know. You see these guys we, when they first start out and they're just out there, they're like, dick, like I, I would suck and they're a nervous. dick for like a million dollars. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And they just go, they're nervous and they go for five fucking straight minutes back right. and in and out and bringing up right. all kinds of crazy examples. Right. When, when we were talking to Adobe, uh, Adobe Maxwell of a couple months ago. It's funny you say that, like, it just swears. So let's preface this with uh, just in the, we're coming up on a year, right? In one year, I've seen one or two mics close, and word is it's because they're Degr- businesses, and they have yeah. people going in there going, like, F the gays and this and that. and The yeah. quality this and that. Blah, blah, blah. They, yeah. they, they don't want that. They're trying to attract people to their business. They don't want that. I get that. You know, you go to a... <laughs> Where is you follow the money? Just uh, I always say, follow the money. Right? Yeah, we're there because it's their business. <laughs> right. Their business is to thrive. They thrive with people that are bringing people in that are gonna promote funniness. That's classy. That's slightly uptick. Not there's pl- look at there's places you can do that, and I'm not yeah. telling you to change your sets, but go there to do it. If you want right. to come to Oz and you only want to do two minutes up on the stage with a clean joke that you're trying to bring into your repertoire, A, it's going to be good for us, and B, it's going to be good for your saleability. You're a yeah. business. You are the business of what you're selling. If you yep. aren't sellable, no one's going to put you on a show, bro. So come to Oz so that you can show what you can showcase because there's going to be people there that are on big shows. And like when they see you, they're going to be like, oh, did you see X, Y, Z? They were fantastic. I saw them a couple of weeks ago over at the show in Seabrook. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying yeah. to promote my show out of what we're talking about. But what I'm saying is just like how you want to perceive it. I'm a business owner, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, a lot of you guys know business. You guys are smart. You have jobs, right? What's the end of the line? The bottom line is making money, right? We're up there 
because we don't care about money. We care about getting better at what we do so that we get exposure to do what we love to do because this is a hobby. To them, it's the business. For us, it's fucking a bunch of jamokes coming in to buy food and say some jokes and laugh a little bit with the staff. And that's all yeah. it needs to be. You know what I mean? And that's where we want. And we want that collectiveness. We want everybody to come into these things, and we want people talking to each other. We don't want people sitting in corners and groups. We want you to be talking together. That's what the fortune was for. The fortune was yep. because, hey, boom, you just got popped out of your group, and you didn't even know it was happening. So guess what? you got to pay attention to the show to see if you're on next. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like that idea because when I think about places like uh, when you're going to do comedy in a place that uh, people might not know comedy's going on, I mean, they're already there, like a, like a restaurant. And they uh, are, sorry, there's trivia before our show. So the whole restaurant's full from a trivia and then it rolls right into our show. So it's love. trivia, bang, right into it. So we already got a packed friggin' house. Uh, do me a way. favor. And I know Jay's going to do this because Jay runs the trivia, right? Jay's amazing, yes. He's phenomenal. Oh, treat treat that crowd so good in before. Oh, we in between. We, we've been to mics. We've been to a couple yeah. mics for this trivia before. And yeah. the host would go up and go like, hey, uh, glad you enjoyed trivia. Nope, There's going to be happening. some comedy. You don't have to stay. You don't have <laughs> yeah. to stay. You can leave right oh, now. You just, yeah, go ahead. You can leave. It's fine. No, nope. Okay. We'll see you later. Uh, but we are going to do some comedy. And <laughs> it's like, please don't do that. Like, bring up the we, energy. Get people to stay. We have been, we have been in there every Monday for the past four weeks, talking, promoting, hanging flyers, hanging all the stuff, and everybody in there is like, oh, my God, you're going to do comedy after this? This is so much fun. This is going to be great. Yeah, you know? that's going to be bad. And that's the key, because there's a couple of restaurants that we've been to to do it where we feel like we're imposing on the people yeah. who are there by nope. doing comedy. And I remember nope. a couple of weeks ago, we uh, Wayne was booked on a show in Quincy with Delusional, and it was in a restaurant. And the way that they set it up, announced it, where it was, the the area of it, People were more excited to see the comedy show start, and that's the key. Yeah. You want yeah. to, when someone goes in and they see comedy about to start, right. you want them their initial reaction to be excited. And when you got a wheel behind exactly. you and like a intrigue and it's comics crazy. that are randomly up, I think that that's going to immediately give that idea. <laughs> yep, <clears throat> I love it's it. stupid. We, you know what it is? It, the wheel, the wheel came about personally because we were so sick of hearing fucking buckets. Whenever you mm -hmm. hear the term mm -hmm. "fucking bucket," you're like, "I'm out." See you later. It's true. I, it's true. I'm not. I'm not convinced that the buckets are not rigged. Just saying. Oh, dude, let's not even go down that rabbit hole. On, <laughs> let's not. We don't have enough time, dude. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I, I, but listen here. I'm going to say it this it. way. I seen I, the corruption. So, so I, so, <laughs> yeah. So I travel. I travel a lot with what I do, and I ended up. Um, I start. I started going to mics in all of the cities where I go, and. Um, the cool part is it's all buckets everywhere. But mm -hmm. when you're from out of town, they put you on without being in the bucket. So if you oh, nice. give them enough notice, it's pretty awesome because you get to go on wherever you are, even if there's a bucket or not. So it's like I hate buckets, first off. And then after hating buckets, I started going to these towns and, like, got prestigious, like, status. Like, he's from out of, he's from New England, he's from Ayers, right? And you're like, <laughs> you're like that. And then you, and then you go up in these places, and I'm not knocking anywhere or knocking anything about it. I feel like Dave Chappelle when I get off of the stage after an open yeah. mic there. <laughs> and it's like, it's so yeah, phenomenal, you know? Midwestern fucking idiots. You're so I, you're I, wait, about. hold on, hold on, hold on. I have followers from a lot of those places, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's some fuck an amazing talent that's coming up the ranks in cities like fucking Tulsa, fucking Oklahoma, Florida, um, Jesus, down in friggin' Panama <laughs> City, Panama City, Florida. Um, it's just like it's Real just South. awesome. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So yeah I was just gonna around. ask what the furthest place you've performed comedy was, uh, but uh, Las Vegas, Vegas. Yeah, yep. how was that? It's amazing, actually. Um, when you, when you're in Vegas. There's, a, there's so many of them, right? But the problem is, is that I'm working. So, like, I got to be up at 6 a.m. in Vegas time. And I'm still on freaking three hours off New England time. And I'm only there for, like, two, three day time. So, like, mm -hmm. if I want to go to a mic, it's a bucket at 10 o'clock, which is really one in the morning, which really oh, means yeah. I'm not going to be done till 4 a.m. So, mm -hmm. that's the only hard thing for me doing open mics out there, you know? Um, yeah. So, but. I, I'm real. I don't want to say I'm sad. So, I... I have done a lot of traveling for my job as well, um, but not since I've started stand up. The only place I've been since I started stand up was Japan. Um, oh wow, that's, that's cool. that didn't that? go so well. 
Uh, <laughs> hey, man, I hope I can get to Japan and perform. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, I've been to Chicago. I've been to, you know, um, Orlando for work. And I've been to uh, Vegas and Ohio. Like, a bunch of different places. And I kind of wish, like, man, I wish I was uh, I wish I was doing this back then to just mm. look around and see what's up. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah there's, always, I mean, there's always future ones. But that's awesome. You get to go around all over the place. Who, yeah. What's your favorite area that you've done so far? Like, do you think Boston has been, the, as far as challenge, uh, good comedy, all that, what do you think is the best place? I honestly love Panama City, Florida. I they like that idea, tiny, too, Florida. It, it's like a whole little, fucking lull in yeah, one state. Yeah. It was called the Oak. <laughs> it was called the Oak. <laughs> it was called the Oak Barrel or something like that. And I just met some of the coolest people. Actually, this kid, um, he does a podcast that's fantastic. I'll send you his contact. But he's. Uh, I met him, and he's been. A, he's he's been mentoring uh, on a lot of things. And uh, I just. It was one of the coolest nights. This kid Mike that I'm friends with now. Um, it's just awesome. It's awesome when you can do that. Uh, I just. I hated going on travel, and. Um, I just was like, man, I got to figure out a way to make travel more fun for me. Mm -hmm. And so I just jumped on Facebook. Where am I going? What city? Comedy group. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, this one's open. This one's open. Oh, Tuesday night will be there. Okay, let's see if they're going to let me in. I call them. Boom. Hey, you can come on. Sure. Okay. You know. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good stuff. Well, shit, I think we're getting towards the end of this motherfucker, right, Wayne? You got anything else uh, for us, Wayne? Yeah, apparently a new segment. Uh, so the last the last few times we've oh, had people my on fucking head. Don't know my fu- the, but I've listened to both specials and they were both good. So <laughs> I, I, I this year I don't do resolutions or anything, right? Okay. Um, for for New Year's, but I, I decided I wanted to listen to one special a week on average, a comedy special of things that are out of my wheelhouse. And when so, you say special, you mean something like a big name? Doesn't matter. Just something okay. I can actually find. Uh, okay. So my what I've been asking the last few guests have been you know what is there a special that you would recommend for me to watch that or listen to that you think i may not have heard of uh or whatever that that you think is really good so far we're two for two i had big j okerson uh dog belly and the rory scoville one which i forget what the name of the special was you remember that anthony no this is your segment oh, all right by mamitas <laughs> I forget the name of the special, but it was it was good. It was his uh, it was his improv stand uh, special. Gotcha. Um, you're. I, I love the idea of that question. Um, yeah, everybody does except for Anthony. No, I'm 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 gonna be. I'm, I hate unfortunate. you. Not the, not the question. <laughs> <laughs> I, hate, I, hate, I hate I hate you. you. Not the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the love in this room. I love it. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know when like the yeah. Democrats are like, you know what we should do? We should build a bridge, and you're just because they're a Democrat. You're like, shut the fuck up, <laughs> <laughs> build it, <laughs> build it for turtles, dude. Build another <laughs> turtle bridge. I'm fine with that. Exactly, <laughs> fucking nerds. Seventy billion dollar turtle bridge. I'm fine with that. The Republicans build the same thing. They build walls. Who can't? They all suck, dude. <laughs> See, see the propaganda suck. we've already built on the turtle bridge. That's what I do to Wayne every week. <laughs> I, I got somebody. Just the some, migration of turtles coming to fucking eat his face. <laughs> what was a couple weeks ago, Wayne? I was shitting on you, and I, oh, it was clammy hands. I kept saying that Wayne had clammy hands, and uh, one yeah. of the, the guest was like, "I do too, Wayne. You shouldn't feel bad." He's like, "I don't though." <laughs> yeah, it was Connor Ferguson. He's like, "I was like, yeah, I actually don't oh. have clammy hands. I don't know why." I, I met that. him he last night. He just outed me. I yeah, he's hilarious. Met. I met Connor last night. He is really a nice guy, man. He's he really is cool. he is one of my favorites out there. Pro- yeah. Probably my favorite. I, I love him. He Great he's jokes. one of those guys. We yeah. talk. You want to talk about a supportive person? That kid will sure. sit there and listen, and he will laugh his ass off. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. He's got a great laugh. Shout right. out him and next. So, this is a long winded answer. I'm going to tell you on this one for what to watch. Bill Cosby's um, entire discography. Dick. <laughs> from root to staff. <laughs> all right, so, you heard it here, folks. Right. <laughs> have you watched any Richard Pryor? So that's actually one where I, I have tried time and time again, and I just I can't get through it. But if you tell me to, I will listen to the whole goddamn thing. No, I, I'm going to tell you that I am a very rare individual. Um, I refuse to watch comedy or anything that is recorded from anybody. So it does not tint my brain on my writing career because 
Mm. I don't want to hear something that turns me to the point of not using it. I want to be able to someone come up to me and say, have you ever heard this one? It sounds just like yours. And I can say, you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I don't watch comedy. I have watched three specials in the last four years, and they were all fucking Dave Chappelle. That's it. Outside of that, comedy and comics and cars, there's no comedy there. It's all learning aspect. Um, like anything that. before that point, I used to watch before I was in comedy, and I had to write to do what I do. Um, a lot of the good ones back then, obviously. I actually I actually met uh, Dane Cook um Back in 2001, uh, I had a picture with him, and Dane Cook was like, I, I thought the guy could fucking walk on water, dude. He's just, he's so incredibly <laughs> amazing. And, it, and it actually, I actually, I chatted a couple times with him on Instagram way early. Hit him up for on. me, bro. I'm I've... telling you right now, he doesn't answer back anymore, but I sent him the picture of me and him doing the fucking shocker. I got it in the back over there. I can bring it up. <laughs> me and him doing the shocker when he, when he, when he was like fucking, I didn't even know how to do it anymore. He was killing it. And, uh, yeah. oh yeah, right there. He, he was, he, that was his logo. And, um, but anyways, I don't watch comedy. I don't, I refuse to watch comedy. I respect people that do, but I don't want to have anything that I have in my brain that I want to produce into a joke be ruined by someone else's ideas. You, you know what I watch comedy for now? And uh, I'm, I mean, I kind of stole this from Anthony in a bit, in a way. Um, I listen to it and I watch it not for the material, but for the technical aspect of it. How, the how act. people, yeah. how the act. So how, how people hold the mic, how they walk, yeah. how they, Yep. Inf- how they inflect certain words, oh, how they man. take a right turn, how they take a left turn. I like how structure they, yeah. too in it. Like I, I watched um, the last Chappelle uh, one uh, a couple uh, like a week ago. Like you were saying, I watched the, yep. uh, it. Was very good. And I, my favorite part about watching specials now is knowing, like not knowing, but I feel like I know what got him to write that joke. Meaning when I'm hearing his five minute joke. I hear the yep. punchline where I went, that was your first thought. That's what made this whole yep. joke happen, is you yep. thought that, like, kicker in the pussy, like that uh, a construct where you thought the punchline and you wrote the joke around it. I feel like yeah. I can see that in a lot of oh, people's yeah. jokes now where I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah that was your thought. That you went, oh, that's a bit. And then you're, yep. I, I saw you write the setup around it. And I think that's really cool because you don't really think about that when you're doing mm-hmm. uh, stand-up at the beginning. And yeah, Dan they Cook, don't. come on, man. We know we're harassing him. Wayne's harassing him. Wayne's harassing Dan Cook to come on the show because on a live, he said that, hey, well, maybe. Uh, and when, uh, hey, you know and- what? <laughs> you got to have fucking goals in life, and I'm not going to say you're not going to have them on. I hope uh, you do. I really uh, do. I'm going to tell you, I'm a salesman, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at what I do, and it's not because I give up. So it's awesome, Dan dude. Cook will be on this fucking show at dude, some point. I, I got you back. I'll, I'll like every single time you harass him, and so he comes. I'm fine with that. I, I'm not, uh, I'm nope. not going to say the – I'm like Tommy. I'm not going to say the name, but I know mm-hmm. somebody who is integrated in the Cook family. So if I have Listen, to go man. that route, I will. That's fantastic. And That's I fantastic. give a swashbuckling hand job. So that is how I'm going to get him. Into the <laughs> hey, <fucking> listen. <laughs> dude, I'm, like I said to you two seconds ago, and I was genuinely honest, I, I really hope you get him on. That would be fucking amazing. But, you know, it's uh, – yeah, no, it's t- it's tough, you know. I mean, you gotta you gotta figure out what works when you're on stage. And I've heard through the grapevine. I did not take this gentleman's class, but I hear Tony V is a master of technique, uh, what to do, where to go, how to act, where you know, pick a you- pick a pick a lane, you know, stick with it. If you're going to wear sweatshirts, wear sweatshirts. You're going to wear a hat, wear a hat. You're going to do that. You know what I mean? But like, there's all kinds of aspects of getting up onto that stage when you start. What? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, Anthony always gives me a hard time about wearing a hat. He said, wear a hat, wear a hat. No, 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 no. I don't give you a time for wearing (laughs) your fucking hat because of that. I give you a hard time for wearing your hat because of how you hold your fucking mic and no one can see your fucking stupid face. And I want people to see your stupid fucking face so it turns them off for comedy forever. And I wore flannels for a lot of shows in a row because I wanted to do Tony V style continuity, Tony E., uh, and and I could have been my own version of that. And instead, Wayne made me feel self conscious about it, and so I'm never wearing a flannel again. Hang on a and second. Hang on a second, Wayne. You fucking shit on flannels, bro. He no, just Anthony. Because Anthony's no. from Lawrence. All right, Anthony's oh, from you Lawrence. Are. 
He should be Yo, wearing the, the flat rim hats. Yeah. Actually, and... they're having a sick show on the 14th for uh, Maxwell Schultz at the Spicket River. Spicket River? Way. Yeah, yeah. yeah they do great yeah. shows over there. Freddie Sibeli, yeah, all I, that. Shout the out. The owner is phenomenal. Yeah, Freddie's the man. Max is the man. Um, the owners of Spicket River. I actually just did this fucking poetic message about that like 10 minutes before your show. He put mm-hmm. it on and I just said, because they, they opened one month before. So I don't mean to freaking steer this into a different direction, but they mm-hmm. opened one month before covid hit their whole establishment sunk every dollar into it and could not have customers so they sold beer out of the back door for fucking six months i went there for six months every week and bought a four pack i got to know the owner so well that it is such a phenomenal venue and i'm so happy that a, a fellow comedian friend is running a show there because it's it's a cool it's a cool city it's a cool spot it's a cool town and comedy in lawrence is pretty dope yeah, and also we should give one more shout out to One Broadway Collaborative too. To, oh my so, god! Uh, Monday nights, everyone. If yep. you're not gonna go to the beautiful new Seabrook one, if you're taking, if you've gone the week and now you can't go the next week, yep. go to One Broadway because it's yep. a feedback mic and you can bring your new shit there and hear from the people in the crowd. It's awesome. Some good feed. I always walk away with a fucking punch out of there. I always do. Man, always, tell me when you go in punch. there. I'd love to go there if you guys are gonna head over there. That place is. Absolutely. It's literally. It's. It's like. 15 minutes from my house so oh perfect yeah yeah that place is great max is great freddy's great we're gonna try to organize uh because we talked to the owners of spick yeah. about doing a weed show over there so yep. uh we might get one of those going which would be great so we're hoping that'll happen too wayne's you're in the pre- ocean you're pretty close <laughs> 15 minutes from lawrence so you're pretty I, close uh, to, to me not not anthony but have you uh, you've been I have a time po- i have a time portal i have a time portal that's how i get to places quickly <laughs> I, have, I have a time i have a time machine have you been to the safe in Lowell? I have. Have you been to the Dancy safe? Dancy. I don't know what that means. The Dancy. So they they started. Uh, there used to be a mic at Concept Six in Lowell. Yes. That yeah. got shut down. That moved to the I, safe on Thursdays at nine p.m. I think it is. Wait and, a second. There's two shows at the safe now a week. Yeah, right, Thursdays and Tuesdays. Yeah. But the okay. set, the, the one on Thursday is like a mixed mic. So there's basically a bunch of hip hop artists going up and doing oh. stuff. Anthony that's not mixed. That's there. all hip hop artists, and then one time me and Wayne. <laughs> so yeah, so it's it's mixed because we went up Is there. Is it open and I told... to do comedy yet? Oh yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're wicked open to it. That's uh, pretty good. Oh, it's... I forgot to add. I'm sorry. One more thing about my show. We're gonna have music in between people on our stage too. So there's gonna be an element of music too by wow. uh, by us as well. So I forgot to mention that. I'm sorry. Oh, and, nice. I, and I didn't even. I, I, so real things. quick, now that I got somebody that's gonna be running something that has music in it, I just want. Someday, I was a musician before, and I've always yeah. dreamed about blowing, like, everybody, hopefully we do a night where all the comics in there know me, and then instead of doing comedy, I'm going to play a couple songs, and everybody's like, what the fuck? It's going to be awesome. So, yeah, we're gonna are you going to sing happen. them, or are you just going to oh, yeah. dance I was, on the stage? I was a singer, it, I was a guitar player. Anthony so is like, uh, sick, do you know dude. Bayside? Bayside, Bayside. Look no. up Bayside when you get off, and okay. Anthony sounds a lot like Bayside. Okay. Well, thank you, Wayne. I do like them quite a bit. Yeah. But yes. Um, so, if you're gonna have rocking. music, are you gonna have like entrance themes for your comics? Like, can can I say like, hey, I want to come up to this song, and then you call I me up? I don't know the answer of that yet. And the only reason why I say that is I don't know how much more coordination that's gonna make. But with that said, over time, residual appearances will have a idea of songs in a playlist to make Mm. that easier if that makes sense because you got to understand how difficult that is we're gonna have 18 people on a wheel spinning randomly we're gonna have to figure out whose song that is in time to have them walk up after their name already got called it's gonna be a little bit I just yeah. I'm not I don't want to say no to that but I'm gonna say it it's a challenge but you know what yeah Every challenge can be conquered with freaking patience. Just right? a dream. Wayne mind, is used it. to people saying no to him. You can I, tell him straight up no. He's I don't, fucking I don't to- think it's a bad idea. <laughs> I would love to have a ramp up song for everyone, dude. You know what I mean? But we're probably going to like have one, but it might not be the I, one you want. I'm you gonna, know what I mean? It's going to be it, it's going to be engaging at least. I'm going to tell you so I used to DJ uh growing up when I was 16 to like 29 or something like that. And cool. The number one thing that was the most annoying thing is when people would request uh, really odd songs that yeah. nobody wanted to hear. Like, 
You'd have oh, a bunch of terrible. old whiteies dancing to the freaking grease <laughs> yeah, right. and B fifty twos, and then I had to take a shit, so I right. put on uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Lights, nice thirteen minute yeah. song, pinch one off real quick, yeah. and then get there back. There you go. So <laughs> rumble on back, and then yeah. you have that yeah, little guy come up and go. Can you play Fuel by Metallica while Granny's out there right. trying to keep her dentures in right. while fucking doing a right. twist? Can you play Slipknot? The best one no. is Itchy no. Cooper. Wayne I still just have described no the thing that he just did to you, which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. I love that Wayne does that. He's like, you know who are dumb pieces of shit? People who ask people to play music for him. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that, but that was the point of He shit on himself. Yeah. He shit on himself. He, he wants he usually the does. music that he wants on the- <laughs> No, I'm sorry, Wayne. We're not playing that song, but <laughs> yeah, Wayne's like you know one of those you know the painting of the stairs that always goes in a circle of itself. It's an optical <laughs> illusion. Wayne's like that, but he shits on himself, so he shits down, but it fucking hits him in the top of the head every time. <laughs> oh my god, you guys! Are pretty, I, I wish I played the video games you were on because I'm pretty sure you harassed a lot of people. No, no, it was just each other. We, we didn't block it was everybody just else. Each other. It was just yeah. us. This is this is our life. Oh, this is how we do it. text, voice. So you guys physically never knew each other, Not but you've you met on. Oh, oh, you yeah. knew oh, each no, other yeah. in an auto parts store uh, when yeah, Anthony Wayne was, was my boss. Oh, okay. What yeah. seat? Where? Uh, Anthony was like what eighteen, seventeen, eighteen when you started. I was where like twenty one. Yeah, where was, I was it? High school stuff. Consumer auto parts. Wait. Oh hell yeah! Yeah yeah. So we 16, we worked in one of the because I was still in high school. Oh nice. Oh, you were sixteen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was plowing sure, that kitty girl. I mean, I don't even know if I could say that because <laughs> technically, I'm, I'm, ge- I'm, I'm, like, I'm getting excited about a memory of a 16 year old girl. Technically, <laughs> I haven't seen her since then, but it was awesome. Are you, ga- um, are you yeah. guys, ca- are you car guys, or because of it, or no? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm actually quite the opposite. I, I did it. I loved my job. I hated cars. Um, yeah. I left. I, I work in the machining industry now. I'm a salesman for a, a tooling oh. company. Uh, and I love that a lot more. It's all math for me. Cool. And I get to you know do Dude, that's speeds awesome. and feeds and all that shit. And, and yeah. I grow weed. Which he loves. So it's even yeah, better. And weed, and, and weed accessories. <laughs> <laughs> weed and hey, weed. Like a hand kill of weed. Smoke it if you got it, right? They say I have it's a legal flat now. ass like hand kill. I didn't realize that the other day. You ever wa- like accidentally walk? So- it's a cliche, but you accidentally walk by a mirror and you're like, oh, no. Why? Because like, your clothes is off. And yep. your wife made you go to an antique store and get this really long mirror. Anyway, <laughs> the first time I, I saw that, I, I caught it and I was like, oh, fuck. Hank Hill, right that down is, the center. That is one of my favorite episodes ever. I'm so glad he <laughs> brought that up. That's he so puts the implants funny. in the That's back of the weird, jeans. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wanted, I could you imagine 35 years later every single freaking girl getting a Brazilian butt lift? It's like, <laughs> come on, man. Just go natural. Why do you got to pretend? Let's just be real, guys. We don't care that much. You don't need that. <laughs> Well, as always in open mic pain, I say we let's end it, and then thirty minutes go by, and then we get to the real end. So I think this is it. And Wayne did his thing and got no special as he deserved. Uh, and now we can end because this has been again. Go see Tommy Wires at Tommy Wires right on all social media platforms. Goddamn right, top seven when you Google it, gonna be him. You can't fucking miss him. You can miss me. You can't miss him. And then go on Mondays, Seaburg, New Hampshire, Grill Seventeen to see. The awesome new comedy show where we will be on the 19th, right? Are we good at that? Is that good to say? Is that official? Yes, you are. Nice. Yes, you All are. Right. Woo! So we you fucking are going to be on, on that show. Oh, I can't wait for that. Also, brand new podcast coming out, and we'll let you guys know when because we're going to repost it every chance we get called Real or No Reels, where uh, they're going to be. There it is, right there. Where uh, those guys, Tommy, Mr. Rue, uh, is Jay going to be on that, too? Yes, sir. Jay oh. is actually our maestro, man. He is running the boards. Yeah, and I got to tell you, the best meme man in the game. If you want to get a meme, oh, fucking he's going to absolutely kick you in the core in three oh, different directions. Oh, my God. He makes my life on the worst days. He brightens my world he, with his memes. Yeah. He posted Definitely. one the other day of the there. two beer bottles with the one upside down that looked like a dick hanging down. And I was at work, yeah. and I was like, whoops. I was like, oh, it's just beer bottles. Yeah. We're good. Uh, have Jay you ever is the seen Mother Teresa of memes, yeah. dude? <laughs> I saw a French romantic movie once, and uh, just the beautiful talking and the black and white. It made me cry and feel something. And when yep. when Jay puts two beer bottles to make a dick into a meme, right. 
it hits me right. in the same exact way. I, I, I know. I cry, cry He's magical, here. dude. That's yep. so. He, so me and Sean, obviously, we stay positive, right? But we brought Jay in. We needed somebody that doesn't care what anyone thinks of them. And Jay is just one of those guys. He's the nicest soul, <clears throat> but he just it, he's gonna do what he feels, and he doesn't care about your feelings. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and, and we love neither him for do it. I. Uh, yep. Because the world is a gross place full of awful people who are also sometimes <laughs> worthy of the step request for laughs. That's what happened. And one of the comments went out that he's like, and then the girl came in the room and she said the C word. And I was behind him, and I was like, is this guy being cunt? Is he saying the fucking C word instead of cunt in this room of comedy?